Myris Briatus is all ready to fight Jay Opataya this April. Now, we all remember that questionable diss track that he released snubbing Jake Paul, but now that he has a title shot coming up for him, is he still as desperate to face Jake Paul? Keep watching this video for all the details and more of the latest boxing news. So, what does the title shot entail for Jay Opataya? Australian boxer Jay Opataya has finally gotten his first title shot against Latvian beast Myris Briatus. Briatus will be defending his IBF, cruiserweight championship belt on April 6th in Opataya's native Australia. The national heavyweight champion, Justice Huni, will also be appearing on the same card. Dean Lonergan, who's the same guy promoting the Horn fight, is also the promoter for the Opataya versus Briatus fight. He revealed that the deal came about four months ago because of the demands of Briatus' management company, Wasserman. Wasserman is the multi-billion dollar giant that manages some major stars such as Ed Sheeran, Billie Eilish, and Coldplay, as well as major athletes like Russell Westbrook, Jamie Vardy, and Katie Ledecky. About the negotiation, Lonergan has said, Before Horn fought Corcoran, I brought Manny Pacquiao out to Australia to fight Horn. And I can tell you that this fight between Jay Opataya and Myris Briatus was far more complex to negotiate than Pacquiao Horn. The level of detail in the contracts is nothing short of incredible. But that's what happens when you're dealing with a company that has the scale and power of Wasserman. Briatus is definitely a force to be reckoned with. His brilliant record of 28 and 1 with 20 knockouts puts him among the boxing elite. So the upcoming coming fight will be a tough one for Opataya, but at the same time, Opataya is also being given a huge opportunity to showcase his potential and prove to the world that he deserves the opportunity he's been given. What happened to Briatus' pursuit of Jake Paul? Following the rap song that he released, Briatus made headlines because of his desperate attempt at winning a challenge against amateur boxer Jake Paul. So is his pursuit still ongoing now that he has to defend his belt against Opataya, or has he given up on his dreams of fighting Jake Paul? It turns out that Briatus has finally backed out. He wanted a multi-million dollar fight against someone whose name is growing at an exponential rate in the world of boxing. But now he has something equally, if not more important, coming up for him in the form of a title defending fight this April, and it seems that Briatus is satisfied. The negotiator of this new fight deal, Dean Lonergan, also spoke about Briatus' attempts at challenging Jake Paul to a fight. He said that Briatus and Paul do not share the same caliber, and Paul was simply scared of facing a real boxer. He said that Paul is not used to fighting big shots such as Briatus, and had the fight taken place, it would have been a brief one because Paul would have lost right away. Briatus is no stranger to fighting while on the road. He's booked some major victories in foreign countries like England, Greece, the USA, and Germany. His track record has also been almost speckless so far. In fact, his only defeat was against Alexander Usyk, who went from unified cruiserweight champion to the current heavyweight champion following his victory against Anthony Joshua. In other news, a spiritual journey is what it'll take Deontay Wilder to make key career decision. Deontay Wilder's defeat against Tyson Fury last October really shook the American boxer to the point where he considered quitting boxing altogether. Following his defeat, Wilder started vocalizing the struggles he's had inside the ring. The boxer senses cheating going on in the industry and has said that he feels as if he's not only going up against the opponent inside the ring, but also the referee. Though he didn't give any examples of instances where he felt that the odds were unfairly against him, he said that the industry is a pit for politics and mistreatment. Some fans have speculated that it's his fights against Fury that have bothered the 36-year-old the most. They think that out of the three fights the two boxers have had, Wilder should have won at least two. But Wilder hasn't gotten his way yet and has even gone on the sidelines ever since his latest fight against Fury. He's apparently considering retirement from the sport. However, the decision now rests on a spiritual journey that Wilder would be going on, and fans are hoping that he stays in boxing. It would truly be a loss if Wilder ends up leaving. The six feet seven, absolute beast of a boxer has had plenty of success inside the ring in the past. In fact, up until recently, Wilder had also defeated Fury. Back in their first fight against each other, Wilder managed to knock Fury out in the 12th round. Then, too, the referee had given account to Fury instead of stopping the fight then and there. So it's really a matter of changing his mind at this point, because Wilder has every reason to leave. According to the fans, he's been facing this treatment in the sport for a long time, and his wish to quit is understandable to many. What does Amir Khan think of Kell Brook's punch resistance? The former WBA welterweight champion Amir Khan recently spoke to Sky Sports about a bunch of topics. Among them was about his to-be opponent, Kell Brook. According to King Khan, Kell Brook no longer possesses the tough punch resistance that he used to, and Khan will be able to knock him out easily in their upcoming face-off. The reason why Amir's opinion makes sense is that Brook was recently folded from a punch that didn't even look that hurtful from the WBO welterweight champion Terrence Crawford. Crawford aimed at Brook with a light jab during the fourth round, but unexpectedly stunned him pretty badly. Brook had to retreat to the ropes to cover up. Crawford then took advantage of the situation and kept it coming, which led to an inevitable stoppage for Brook. Back in 2016, too, Brook simply 
simply stopped punching, even though he wasn't hurt in a fight against Marion Wright. So the recent fight was a fall even further down from that. Several fighters, including his 2B opponent Amir Khan, have taken note of how Brooke has been slacking. This is also why Khan seems so confident that he'd be able to knock Brooke out with ease Saturday night. Who is George Cambosos fighting next? The Zone hasn't expressed any interest in arranging a fight between lightweight champions George Cambosos Jr. and Devin Haney, but the two contenders that do stand a chance at a fight against Cambosos are Ryan Garcia and Vasily Lomachenko. Trainer Robert Garcia says that Cambosos' promoter called him up and told him that Ryan is someone they're looking for in the next Cambosos fight. It makes economic sense for a fight like this to take place, as the number of subscribers to the zone will increase exponentially this way. If a fight indeed takes place, it would be a pay-per-view thing on the zone, as per Dan Raphael. But that shouldn't make boxing fans too happy, right? Having to pay for each view to watch the five-year professional Garcia go up against Cambosos. Cambosos hasn't really beaten anyone as of late, apart from his recent win over an injured Teofimo Lopez. His fights against Lee Slebby and Mickey Bay weren't the best ones we've gotten out of him. So it's understandable why DAZN doesn't want a Cambosos versus Haney face-off, because that'll probably bring in a limited number of subscribers. Cambosos' promoter Lou DeBella has revealed that the next fight will most likely be against Ryan Garcia, so it's a matter of time before the dates are revealed. Lastly, Jamar Charlo has been arrested. Boxer Jamar Charlo has been the subject of many hot rumors in recent days. The most recent one of them is regarding legal trouble outside of the ring. The undefeated two-division and current WBC middleweight champion was arrested on Friday in Texas. Charged with assault causing bodily injury, Charlo has been formally convicted of domestic violence as well. This is a third-degree felony, which carries a two- to ten-year prison sentence if found guilty. Charlo's currently in custody, and his unsecured bond has been set at $10,000. The warrant was actually issued last September when Charlo was first accused of domestic assault. The aggravated assault involved a family member, and it seems that it's the same person pressing charges this time as well. Charlo's court hearings will start soon. His fans are hoping that the charges are dropped, or Charlo doesn't plead guilty, because if guilty, it could mean an end to his boxing career. The American boxer has been involved in similar controversies in the past as well, and what becomes of this one remains to be seen. He's pretty much been out of the ring since last June, when he faced Juan Macias Montiel. The title defense remained a win for Charlo. And that's it for today's video. What are your thoughts on the latest Opie Taya versus Briatus face-off? Who are you rooting for? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel where we post similar videos quite frequently. And we'll see you in the next one.